So this is the uh, tocosthion beam system, the laser-induced fluorescence. And then we actually bring another laser in and we ionize them, we do photoionization. Sometimes we get uh, Rydberg states that we ionize. And the lithium ions come down the column and they focus to a really tiny spot on the sample. Ariana, Ariana, did you catch that? Uh, oops, hashtag phone addiction. I think it's time you understand the hashtag technology that's inside your hashtag obsession. So let's open up this phone and see what's inside. What do you think? Okay. All right. Okay, so now we got the cover off. Here's some parts that are inside. There's the battery and here's a circuit board. Now, some people who take their phones apart maybe get this far, see the batteries, but we're gonna go way deeper. So let's, let's get this circuit board out and take a look at it. Now see here on the back side, see those black things? Those are integrated circuits and inside them is a whole world of smaller and smaller circuits. Now if you take a look at this here, this is another example of a circuit, but this is a big one, okay? And, but it's got chips on it too. And inside those chips, are small circuits too. So the world of electronics gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So look at all the different types of chips we have. We got some really big ones. This one is actually from a long time ago. This is uh, from the 1980s. But um, inside here, there's the same sort of chips. Here's a really tiny one. Take a look at that one. See how small it is? That's like the one that's in your phone. So all the electrical components are in that one chip. Well, let's say lots and lots, millions of components are in there. These are actually building blocks. So in, on this chip, there are millions and millions of components, transistors, resistors, and capacitors. But usually a, something like a phone will have several of these chips and they're connected to each other. That's the way these complicated electronics are constructed out of components that are put together. So here's another chip. This is the one we're gonna take apart. Let's open this one up. Awesome. The actual chip inside is very delicate and it has to be protected. You're going to see when we get this open. Oh, starting to peel up there. Yeah, see you see that? You want to take a whack at this? Here. Sure. Give it, give it a try. Um, let's put it in. Forgive me, I'm left handed. So oh, that's very awkward. That's okay. Oh, there, there it we go. <laughs> Perfect. Good shot. All right. Now take a look at that. See what's inside there? Oh, I see it. See this chip? That's an example of a chip. Now what I've got over here, this is how they actually make those things. Look at the size of this. This, oh. is, a, this is a 12 inch wafer. And you see on there are hundreds and hundreds of little chips just like that one. Now what's kind of mind blowing about this is that inside each of those squares, there's lots of them here, inside each one is still millions and millions of circuit elements, transistors and resistors and everything like that. Now we're going to go over to a microscope and take a look at that. So this is the optical microscope. Here's the chip. If you look up on the screen, you can see there's the wafer we were looking at inside there. The first thing you notice, it's got all these little wires. Those are tiny wires. They're just like hairs, right? But those are bringing the electrical circuitry in from the outside. And then on the chip, you start to see it's like a city on there almost. Oh, yeah, I can kind of see a pattern. And once you zoom in on here, you can start seeing that there's a lot of complexity as you go deeper and deeper in here. And uh, you can try to focus a little bit. You can start to see over here that there's, there's stuff there, but you can't quite see it. And the reason that is it's getting smaller than the wavelength of the light. And you just can't see it that well anymore. Let's get a closer look with the electron microscope. So what kind of microscope is this, and why is it important that we use a stronger one? This is a scanning electron microscope, and it gives you a 3D topography image. And you see that the three-dimensional pictures of bugs, they were taken with a scanning electron microscope. The electron beam will hit the sample, and we're going to image the electrons that were scattered off the surface. Uh, so with our chip here that you gave me, I've got it mounted on the wafer plate. Um, we'll actually put it in the microscope and look at the surface. So 
So this is the chip that you saw in the optical microscope and you were able to see the leads in the optical microscope and so we can see those here as well. I can change my magnification and go up quite a bit. Now we can start to see this detail. Okay? You can see all the different lines. You can see that they're raised off the surface a bit. You can see there's holes inside these squares. So I can go up again. Now you can see at, we're at 3,000 times magnification. You can see some vertical lines. You can see this bumpy, bumpy surface. Here's horizontal lines that are not as tall as the vertical lines or underneath the vertical lines. So when I send a text message through my phone, does it go through that pattern? Well, yeah, it does actually, but what it does is it first gets converted into ones and zeros, and those ones and zeros turn into little electrical pulses, and the electrical pulses spread out and fan out through all these conductors. Those are actually wires on the chip. So yeah, your text is going flying through there all the time. So why is it such an intricate pattern? Is that the path of the electrons? Well, it's intricate because it takes a lot of different ones and zeros, switches turning on and off to process all the digital data that gets transmitted. So those things don't look like much, but those are actually the transistors and resistors and everything that make up the circuit. They look like just little rectangles and all that, but that's all they really need to be. They're all connected in special ways, but that's what makes the circuit. Thanks for the in-depth look. Oh, you're welcome. Um, but can I get my phone back? I have to tweet about this. Well, okay. I hope it works. <laughs> and when you do tweet, make sure you think about all those electrons that are flying around in there in all the circuits deep inside that phone. Smartphones are only as smart as the science and technology inside them.